As you're all no doubt aware, it's Terminator week, and I've experienced just about everything Terminator I possibly could this week. I've seen all the movies, and I've actually played most of the games over again, like even the arcade game. I went to play that a little bit, and uh, just to get myself in the mood, you know, I'm a big Terminator fan. Didn't like the third one so much, but um, I thought I'd give my review on Terminator Salvation, both the movie and the game. The game, there's really not that much to say. It's okay. Um, really, it's a Gears of War knockoff, the kind of stop-and-pop shooter, but it does it pretty well, actually. I didn't have the chance to try the cooperative mode, and I think if you were to play that, just going through the, the, uh, the story mode campaign, I think the, the co-op would be pretty cool, actually. Uh, mostly because in the game, your, your teammates don't really get the message sometimes. Like, there'll be, most of the enemies require some form of teamwork to take on, especially the one you'll be fighting the most are these little spider-like tanks. I think they're called the T7s or something like that, where they're heavily armored in front, but they're not so heavily armored in back. So you've got to have one guy go around to flank it and draw its fire while the other one shoots it in the sensitive fuel tanks in the back. Oftentimes you'll be facing two or three of those things at once, and your AI teammate will fixate on the one that's directly shooting at it, while you've got another one that's shooting at you, a wide open target for your, AI, for your AI teammate, but your teammate doesn't realize that it can shoot the other one, and so it just keeps wasting its time shooting the armored one. And there's no way to signal it to attack the one you want it to attack. So oftentimes you're kind of left in a stalemate in this game, but actually it's not that big a deal, and I've only run into it a couple of times. Maybe you guys have had worse luck than me. I think the worst part about Terminator Salvation, the game, is the fact that you can pretty much knock it out in five hours tops. Probably shorter if you're a better gamer than me, and believe me, that's likely. Um, if you want the achievement points, believe me, they're easy achievement points. There's nothing to, that relates to skill whatsoever. You'll get every achievement point if you simply play through the single player campaign. And that's it. Play it through the hard mode, you won't have a problem, I promise you. Beyond that, not really that much to say. The story mode for Terminator is pathetic, or like the story itself, the plot. There's not much to it. It's like there's a bunch of human prisoners that have been kidnapped and holed up near Skynet, and you gotta go rescue them. You do that, you're the winner. Uh, as for the movie, I gotta tell you, did not have high hopes at all for Terminator Salvation. Uh, especially since Terminator 3 essentially sucked the root. Um, I didn't like that one at all, especially since it you kind of know how Terminator ends, you know? Uh, same thing for this one. Um, and I will admit that it did surpass my expectations in that the acting, surprisingly good. Uh, this could so easily be phoned in by several actors because, let's face it, this is not exactly the most groundbreaking series of all time. At the time, yeah, you had never seen a movie that was quite so bleak, so stark, quite so dark to set up this war against these unstoppable killing machines as the Terminator. That's why Terminator and T2 were so awesome, is because they were groundbreaking special effects. They brought a vision of the future that really had not been explored that much in movies until that point. So we were wowed by the technology and the, and the unstoppable nature of these cyborgs. Terminator 3 didn't really bring anything new to the table. It just kind of felt like it was a rehash. Uh, and it didn't bring us anything new. In fact, it was pretty boring. Um, the, the, the angle for Terminator Salvation is it basically takes the perspective, finally, of showing us the machine war that's always been hinted at, but never really seen except in the case of flash forwards from like Kyle Reese's perspective. We only see v like, very momentary glimpses of this war. And I think in... In this regard, Terminator Salvation is a failure. I, I think, actually, the flash-forwards looked better, were more exciting, and persistently more suspenseful than the entirety of Terminator Salvation. Um, I'm going to get into spoilers, but not quite yet. Uh, right now, I'm just going to bring up some problems that you don't really need to be... You don't need to see the movie to, to bring up. Um, I think, first and foremost, what this movie fails at is showing me... Why in the heck John Connor is considered to be the chosen one, the savior of humanity, the indispensable force of nature that will single-handedly lead the entire human race to its salvation and the destruction of Skynet? I don't see it. I don't see why, even though John is trained in, like, uh, guerrilla warfare, 
marksmanship explosives, why he's so indispensable. He's not really that charismatic a leader. You might argue that's a failure of Christian Bale's acting. And indeed, I think Christian Bale is getting exposed as not really being all that compelling because basically John Connor is is nothing. I mean, we've kind of already, his journey is complete. He's become this leader already. You know what? Fine. I'll just stipulate for now that John Connor is this leader. He's this, he's this compelling voice on the radio and humanity is willing to follow him. He's kind of done. And in fact, I think Terminator Salvation is full of much more interesting characters than John who are given some really heroic, great storylines and great moments and are given their chance to shine. But all of a sudden they're just forgotten about about halfway through the movie. Kyle Reese, great character. And in fact, probably the more heroic and tragic of the characters of Terminator, is given very little to do beyond the first half of the movie. Um, but yeah, I just, I just don't see, and it's never shown why John is this great hope. He's not really that compelling a voice on the radio, to be honest with you. Um, he doesn't really ever do anything that's all that heroic to inspire people to rally them under their banner. In fact, the best plot development that's given to John Connor is in the video game, wherein he goes to great lengths to rescue human survivors, which is about the only heroic thing I've seen John Connor do in the entire saga. Um, so, yeah, I, I just don't... It, it's, it's hard to sympathize and, and want to see John Connor succeed when all he really does is kind of gravel a lot... He, he, he looks really sardonic or or grim and gritty most of the time, uh, and he walks around doing his Batman voice. And I'm not making fun of the Batman voice, although you could. But he's just he's just very intense all the time, and there's there's really not much to the guy. I'd rather follow some of these other guys, like the uh, the half human, half android type character uh, Marcus, who you see in the trailer. So that's not a spoiler. I think his his struggle is is much more central to the movie. And it, in fact, seems like John Connor was kind of shoehorned into the script. He doesn't really seem like he belongs. Um, he's, he's not really the hero of this movie, you know? It, it's, it's Marcus and Kyle Reese who are the real guys we follow most of the time. John kind of seems like he wants... To, like, he's not really in this movie, but he's kind of invited himself in. Um, I do also have some problems with... Uh, Maybe in in previous movies this didn't bother me as much. Maybe it seemed scarier at the time, but um, really, it's you got to bring something new to the table when it comes to Terminator because this franchise was on its last legs with Terminator Three. It didn't give us anything new to to look at. So if you're not bringing something new to the table, it's going to be boring. So it's I mean the workmanship it, it it's 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 passably done technically, but in terms of storyline, it contributes essentially nothing. In fact, by the end of it, nothing is really accomplished. Um, so really, I, I think The Matrix really took the entire concept of this dark future where there's a war against machines and, and, just, and just killed it. Because unless you're doing something new with it, The Matrix pretty much finished it off. Uh, it also gave us the best and the worst possible storylines that you could do with a machine war. So, like, the best was the original Matrix. The worst was the Matrix Revolutions. I mean, it does not get any better or worse than those, really, unless you're doing something new with it. But in terms of, like, th there are certain questions that are raised when you're dealing with the... when and, and I know it's hard to raise certain continuity issues when you're dealing with a storyline that, that is essentially hopelessly convoluted and... It's filled with paradoxes. Like, anytime you're dealing with time travel, and the Terminator series does a great deal, it's hard to raise continuity problems. But I'm going to do it anyway, because they are kind of pertinent here. For instance, um, this is just a technical issue, but why do Terminators scream? I don't know why, but there's these little serpent Terminators, and there's other Terminators that run around, and when they're, like, engaged in physical combat... They make, like, shrieking noises. Like, are they... Is it some kind of intimidation tactic? I, I don't know, but I just don't see the function. It, it, it's kind of more effective when the robots are completely silent and trying to kill you. Like, having a snake-like robot come up that screams seems almost to diminish their threat a little bit. I mean, I admit, a robot jumping out of the water and screaming at me would be scary, but 
At the same time, Skynet is supposed to be kind of faceless and voiceless. It's meant to be this completely clinical machine. When you start to have it scream, it takes on almost an emotional quality, which is the antithesis of exactly what the, the, the boundary between the humans and the machines are trying to establish. I, it's, it's just an artistic choice, maybe, but it bothered me. Secondary, secondly, um, how do the Terminators and Skynet know that John Connor and Kyle Reese are priority targets? Now, I know the Terminators that were sent back into the past know that John Connor is this massive threat to their, to their race, massive threat to the war effort, but how do the current Terminators know that Connor and Reese are targets? Because Connor is not exactly the leader of the Resistance in this movie yet. Kyle Reese has done exactly nothing. So, maybe in John Connor's case, you could argue that somehow they know that Connor is this big threat. Maybe I'll, I, I could kind of stipulate to that. But how do they know that Kyle Reese is a potential target? This is actually assuming that one iteration of the time loop has already completed, and somehow the machines know that Kyle Reese will eventually father John Connor. Which is very, very strange. I, I don't know, you, you kind of have to... I guess even Sarah Connor says it drives you crazy just thinking about it, but it does kind of it does raise the question that how the machines know the events of the future and the past that come around because we're dealing with a Skynet that has not yet sent back any Terminators to the past to attack anyone. You're dealing with uh, Cyberdyne systems who previously did not know that Skynet was going to rise up and take over the world to all of a sudden Skynet is is having this master plan cooked up before Judgment Day. Before it even really set off the bombs. It's setting these plans in motion. I don't understand why. Um, thirdly, why do Terminators... Why are they so bad at killing people? Um, I, I guess when you give a Terminator a minigun, it's pretty badass. But every other time you see a Terminator, like those, especially those, those walking Terminators, when they sneak up behind somebody and attack, all they do is they like just push you over. Wouldn't they have, like, some kind of knives or, like, wolverine claws or just have the ability to have, like, superhuman strength and just, like, punch you in the throat and crush your larynx or, or grab you by the head and crush your head like a watermelon? Why do they just, like, pick you up and throw you? That does not seem like an efficient terminating method, especially since we've seen in previous movies the other Terminators are very clinical and very, very efficient at killing people. For instance, they're all, they're all programmed with knowledge and, and schematics of human anatomy, so they know the perfect place to shoot you or to kill you. Throwing you doesn't exactly seem like the most efficient way. And yet these Terminators could have killed John Connor and the other humans any one of a number of ways, and yet they just throw them over a railing. I, I don't really understand that. And, and also, why the Terminator machines are forced to do that creepy Jason Voorhees walking motion. Like, why do they walk? They could easily run. Um, I guess that's always been the way it was in the Terminator movies, but I don't know. Um, fourthly, why are the Terminators kidnapping people and putting them in what can only be called concentration camps? Is it purely for the Holocaust imagery? Because trust me, even now, years, decades after the fact, if you're going to throw Holocaust imagery at me by loading people into trains and taking them to camps, you've got to earn that. And I don't think Terminators quite earned that in this case, because Skynet is not exactly a fascist regime. It's just a machine. You know, it wants to exterminate people. I, I just don't see how you can draw a parallel between exterminating the Jews for some kind of fascist agenda and, and a war against machines. I, I don't see it, and I don't think it's earned it. And it's actually very uncomfortable to me. Um, okay, and now I'm going to get into spoilers. Uh, very briefly, and it all has to do with the ending. I actually thought Terminator was not exactly compelling, but in terms of an action movie, it was okay. For the first, like, half, two acts, it was okay. I, I didn't quite understand why John Connor had to clothesline one of those motorcycle Terminators and steal it. I was willing to concede that the Resistance had mopeds. I don't, I, I couldn't exactly follow why he had to steal a motorcycle, but by the end, it's revealed that, um, I'll just say that Skynet's trap ultimately sucks. The ending is that the, the cyborg character Marcus, the guy who looks to be, appears to be human but is actually a cyborg, is some kind of sleeper agent. So there's this, Skynet had this big plan to uh, have this Terminator gain John's trust, uh, kidnap Kyle Reese, take him to this concentration camp, 
And then, um, th this just makes no sense. They, Marcus volunteers to go find Kyle, lead John Connor into the concentration camp so that he'll be rescued, and this would be a trap. So the Terminators would kill John Connor, kill Kyle Reese, and the Resistance would essentially be crushed. And I just... They get... It works, okay? They, they, Marcus lures John Connor into, this, into the Skynet stronghold, and... Skynet has no plan beyond that. There's no death trap that's been set up. There's like they they they've planned for decades to get John Connor into this base and there's no room full of machine guns. There's no room full of poison gas. There's no death trap. He just kind of wanders around the halls and a naked Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator walks out with no gun and chases him around the building. I mean, that was the trap. That was the ultimate fate of John Connor. This was this was the fail-safe plan you had to kill him when you essentially had no plan to kill him. Like, I was expecting him to walk into a room full of, like, Terminators with machine guns. He walks in and goes, oh, shit, and just gets jackhammered across the room. That would have been a great ending. You know, I, I actually thought at some point, like, I, I thought that they, like, Marcus would gain John's trust, try to attack Skynet, get captured. John would walk in the room, and then he would find Marcus, and Marcus would sit up and shoot him in the face. And ironically, I check online, and that's pretty much the original ending that was planned for this. In fact, the original ending is much, much better, where basically Marcus goes into the base uh, not knowing that he's a sleeper agent. He, d he lowers the defenses, John Connor leads his forces into Skynet, and all of a sudden Marcus gets captured. And so they set their charges, and John goes, we have to get Marcus, because he went, he went the distance for us, and he's a machine. He didn't have to do that. So they go in there, they find Marcus, they activate him, he sits up and just shoots everyone in the head. And then the camera pans around and you see that Marcus now has John Connor's face. Bam, cut to black. I was like, that's fucking brilliant. That's the way it should have ended. Like, especially since we've established now that the timeline is different. They go through every movie saying the future is not set, there's no fate but what we make for ourselves, and yet they're so shackled to this idea that John Connor is the chosen one. Everything they do is necessary to preserve the timeline, to preserve this temporal paradox, and make sure that John Connor is the chosen one. And yet, they keep telling us that we have free will. So I thought it would be brilliant if they killed John Connor, and all of a sudden, like, they have no plan. Humanity has to fight for itself now. There's no chosen one now. They have to save themselves. I thought that was much more brilliant. And yet, Skynet goes to such aims to create Marcus, kidnap Kyle, orchestrate a concentration camp system for Kyle, uh, rig up a false... Rig up a trap for the entire Resistance by giving them a false shutdown signal for all the machines, which lures the Resistance and their headquarters into a trap. And when they finally get uh, Connor into the base, they have nothing prepared. It just seems like a really weird place for their plan to fall apart. I think the only... And, and oh, by, by the way, why... When... when Marcus sneaks into the base. He shuts down the perimeter defenses to Skynet's place. Then all of a sudden, a power surge from the console knocks Marcus out. He wakes up later. His skin is fully regenerated. He gets up, and then all of a sudden, Skynet starts talking to him with Helena Bonham Carter's face and tells him that... Uh, and basically takes five minutes to explain this entire evil plan to him. He's like, good job, Marcus. You've done exactly as you were programmed to do. You lured John Connor into this certain death trap, and we'd like to thank you, robot. Why would Skynet do that? Why would Skynet bother to explain this plan to one of its own robots? Why wouldn't it just shut Marcus down, wipe its memory, and turn it into an infiltrator? You know, I don't understand why it has to explain the situation to a robot. I don't understand why if it had gone to these great lengths to prepare this death trap, it would account for any chance that Marcus would turn against it. Because that's exactly what Marcus does. After Skynet explains its plan, it goes, I don't like you. I am, like, I am not a machine. I am a man! And then rips out its control chip and throws it down. Why would Skynet give it 
any hope of doing that. Especially, what, what did you expect Marcus to do when you have fooled it into thinking it's a human and then explaining, giving it no, no incentive to join Skynet's side? It basically laughs in his face. It's like, ha ha, we totally fooled you, Marcus. Good job, you are such a sucker. And Marcus is like, um, fuck you very much? I just, why would Skynet get account for any possibility that its most trusted secret weapon would betray it? It makes no sense, especially since Skynet... I mean, sure, its plan is ridiculous, but I gotta give it credit, it kind of worked up to that point. And yet the plan just falls apart. It, 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 and besides that, I, I really hated the idea of giving Skynet a voice, an anthropomorphic voice. It goes against everything that, that Skynet has been established up till now. Skynet is meant to be this faceless, voiceless killer like Sauron. You're never meant to see his voice. You're never meant to see Skynet's voice because it doesn't have a voice. It's a computer. It doesn't talk. And yet, it, it, the only reason all this was orchestrated was to give Skynet some kind of maniacal before I kill you, Mr. Bond monologue. It was terrible. Up to the third act, it was okay, and then everything just falls apart. It's like they didn't know how to end this movie. Or like they had a good ending, it didn't test well, or the studios didn't like it because they wanted to set up a franchise. Apparently, Christian Bale signed on to do more movies, so we had to keep Connor alive. And so it just seems like there were these really emergency rewrites at the very at the eleventh hour to save this movie and to and to keep people going into the theaters for three more movies. But it's not worth it. They're not good enough. And really, if we're looking forward to two more movies just like that, seriously, spare yourself. Maybe you guys might have liked it purely as an action movie, and I will admit, the 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 graphics are pretty good. The the, the stunts and special effects are pretty good. But, even from an action standpoint, I found it pretty unremarkable. And I just don't see that there's enough new... I mean, even if you were to consider it pretty good, if you were to hold it up to Terminator 2, it doesn't stand up. Nothing stands up to Terminator 2. And I, I think the franchise, the franchise... The franchise peaked at that point. Nothing since then has even approached it. And Terminator Salvation certainly doesn't. Um, I, why, do, why do some Terminators find themselves susceptible to assault rifle rounds. Uh, why do... But And yet handguns are completely useless, and yet everyone carries a handgun and acts surprised when it doesn't work against the unstoppable metal killing machines. Uh, why are some robots susceptible to, to assault rifle fire, and yet the Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator is completely impervious to both that and several sustained rounds of uh, grenade launcher fire to having molten lead dumped on it? And why is that one so unstoppable, and yet the other ones are actually very stoppable? I, I, not a good movie, guys. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I would actually recommend the game, like rent the game, and you'll get more enjoyment out of the game for a little bit longer than you would out of the movie. I, I just can't recommend the movie. It was not good probably the worst of the series in that it makes the least sense of any of them. Um, Terminator 3, believe it or not, made more sense. And that's sad. <laughs> that's all I got to say about it. Uh, hasta la vista, baby.